everyone. Here is the latest Tazian news with me, Vanessa. The Catholic leader expresses his solidarity for the Myanmar people. Pope Francis came down clearly against military leaders in Myanmar following the coup three last week, expressing his solidarity with the people of the country and asking leaders to serve the common good and seek democratic harmony. Buongiorno. In questi giorni seguo con viva preoccupazione. These days I am following with deep concern the developments of the situation in Myanmar, a country which I carry in my heart which much affection since my visit there in 2017. In this very delicate moment, I want to again assure my spiritual closeness, my prayers and my solidarity with the people of Myanmar. And I pray that those in position of responsibility in the country show sincere willingness to serve the common good, promoting social justice and national stability for our harmonious and democratic coexistence. Preghiamo per il Myanmar. Francis, speaking at his Sunday address in St. Peter's Square, says he followed the situation in Myanmar, which he visited in 2017 with deep concern. Tens of thousands of people rally across Myanmar to denounce the February 1st coup and demand the release of elected leader Aung San Suu Kyi in the biggest protest since the 2007 Safran Revolution that helped lead the democratic reforms. The leader of the 1.2 billion member Roman Catholic Church also appealed for the protection of an unaccompanied minor struck in northern Bosnia after the European Union countries sealed their borders due to the coronavirus pandemic. Francis was also visibly happy to hold his Angelus prayer in St. Peter's Square, speaking to live audience for the first time since December 20 after Italy eased COVID-19 restrictions. Sono contento di vedervi di nuovo I'm happy to see you gathered in the square again, even those who are always there. He told a few faithful gathered under the ring in St. Peter's Square. Myanmar nationals protest in front of United Nations office in Bangkok against military coup. Hundreds of Myanmar citizens living in Thailand protest in front of the United Nations building in Bangkok, calling for the release of Aung San Suu Kyi and for the United Nations to stop the military. Actually, we are supporting our leader Aung San Suu Kyi to free, so we don't, we don't want military crew. That's why we are here to support our leader on San Suu Kyi, and that we would like to free her as soon as possible. Tens of thousands of people rally across the country to denounce in the biggest protest since the 2007 Safran Revolution that helped lead to democratic reforms. Uh, you want to help, uh, help something to say to the uh, Myanmar military? to stop the uh, deterioration. Suu Kyi faces charges of illegally importing six walkie-talkies and being held in police detention for investigation until February 15. Her lawyer says he's not being allowed to see her. According to Myanmar's news, tens of thousands of people rally across Myanmar to denounce the February 1st coup and demand the release of elected leader Aung San Suu Kyi. Myanmar police injured by aggressive protesters when they protest a military coup in the country. Myanmar state television reports police were injured during attempts to disperse protesters whom acting aggressively in its first acknowledgement of demonstration take place in the country. MRTV on its nightly news says a police truck destroyed at the demonstration in Mandalay where it showed footage of the aftermath, including injured police who it said had acted within the law. It described the protest as being orchestrated by people who want to harm the nation's stability but make no mention of last week's coup or other demonstration that took place across the country. 
Protesters take to the streets in cities and towns in the largest demonstrations in Myanmar for more than a decade against military coup that ousted the elected government of veteran democracy campaigner Aung San Suu Kyi. Cambodian Brazil received supplies of COVID-19 vaccines from China. China helps countries across the world with the battle against the COVID-19 pandemic, especially supplies of COVID-19 vaccines. Ministry of Health in a statement says Cambodia officially approved the emergency use of China's Sinopharm COVID-19 vaccine in the Southeast Asian country. Cambodian Prime Minister Samdek Tekohun Sen says that the first batch of Sinopharm vaccine donated by China arrived in Cambodia. The chief governance adds the vaccine will be provided free to people who are at high risk of getting coronavirus infections such as medical workers, teachers, bodyguards, armed forces members, tuk-tuk and taxi drivers, and garbage collectors, among others. Cambodia so far reports 470 confirmed cases of COVID-19 with zero deaths and 452 recoveries. The Sinovac COVID-19 vaccine developed by China Sinovac Biotech arrived in Brazil, Sao Paulo from Beijing. Butantan Biomedical Institute, a state-run institute in Sao Paulo, will then start to process these raw materials to vaccines to ensure supplies of the COVID-19 vaccines in the country. Brazil records 56,873 new COVID-19 cases and 1,232 related deaths, bringing the initial case load and death toll to 9,396,293 and 228,795 respectively. The Prime Minister of Malaysia arrives at the Presidential Palace and is greeted by the President of Indonesia for his first state visit. Indonesian President Joko Widodo welcomes Malaysian Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin for his first state visit abroad since assuming office. The welcome ceremony at Jakarta's presidential palace holds under strict health protocols, with just a handful of delegates from both sides joining Widodo and Muyiding. Both leaders are expected to discuss issues related to COVID-19, the palm oil industry, transboundary haze pollution, trade and investment, as well as the possible formation of a green lane to allow business travel between the two nations. And both countries also call on Myanmar to resolve its political differences through legal means as the situation could affect the peace and stability in Southeast Asian region. Indonesian and Malaysian leaders call for Myanmar to resolve political differences with legal means. Leaders from Indonesia and Malaysia call on Myanmar to resolve its political differences through legal means as the situation could affect the peace and stability in Southeast Asian region. After meeting with Malaysian Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin, Indonesian President Joko Widodo says he hopes authorities in Myanmar can continue to uphold the ASEAN principles on adherence of the rule of law, good governance, democracy, human rights and constitutional government. His view was echoed by Muhyiddin, who called the political situation in Myanmar worrying for the country's democratic process. The leaders also urged the 10-member ASEAN bloc to chair a special foreign minister's meeting in light of recent events in Myanmar. South Korean students hold protests against military coup in Myanmar. South Korean students marches down in the streets towards the Myanmar embassy in Seoul to protest against the recent military coup. Many of the protesters held up banners reading Stand with Myanmar and Fight for Democracy and chanted slogans including Stop the coup and Truth cannot be jailed. The Myanmar army overthrew the elected government of leader Aung San Suu Kyi, handing power to its top general and declaring a one-year state of emergency. The move was condemned by the United Nations and Western governments, who called on the junta to respect Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy landslide victory. China strengthens global cooperation and more contribution to world economic recovery. 
Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Wang Wenbi at a press briefing in Beijing says China's rapid economic recovery created favorable conditions for the global economy to offset the fallout from the COVID-19 pandemic and economic recession and China will continue to provide more global cooperation opportunities and inject more impetus into world economic recovery. The comment came after the International Monetary Fund statement says China is the only major economy in the world to achieve positive growth in 2020 and the country's, and the country's economic growth is expected to reach 8.1% this year. In 2020, despite the impact of COVID-19 and deep global recession, the Chinese economy has achieved steady recovery rapidly with a growth rate of 2.3% creating enabling conditions for the world to resist the negative impact of the pandemic and economic recession. China has been and will continue to be an important engine for global economic recovery and sought-after destination for investors all over the world. Wong stresses that China will always be a supporter of free trade and economic globalization and will continue the opening up drive. China will continue to promote trade and investment, liberalization and facilitation, foster a business environment that is based on market principles, governed by law and up to international standards and unleash the potential of the huge China market and enormous domestic demand. We hope these efforts will bring more cooperation opportunities to other countries and give further impetus to global economic recovery and growth. An expert team of WHO in China did not identify any indication of the transmission of COVID-19 in Wuhan. Liang Wanyan, a member of the WHO China Joint Study Team, at a press conference says there is no indication of the transmission of the novel coronavirus before December 2019 in Wuhan. Speaking at a joint press conference in Wuhan City, central China's Hubei province, attended by scientists from both China and the WHO, Liang first gave a brief introduction on the tasks the study team had conducted aiming to study the origin of the coronavirus, namely SARS-CoV-2, including close scrutiny on influenza-like illness and severe acute respiratory infections. The expert team had reviewed adult sentinel surveillance data from one hospital in Wuhan and Sari surveillance data from one provincial hospital in Hubei province. The full name for Sari is Severe Acute Respiratory Infections. The findings indicate that there is no substantial unrecognized circulation of SARS-CoV-2 in Wuhan during that later part of 2019. Liang adds that the presence of SARS-CoV-2 is not detected in retrospective tests of more than 4,500 specimens from the study program stored in hospitals in Wuhan, other parts of Hubei province and other provinces in late 2019 based on preserved laboratory samples and other supporting early traceback work. An international expert team from the World Health Organization arrived in Wuhan on January 14, 2021 to investigate the origins of the novel coronavirus and conduct joint research with Chinese scientists. The China WHO joint mission consists of 17 China experts and 17 experts from 10 other countries. Vietnamese release ornamental carp into rivers and lakes for Lunar New Year celebrations. Vietnamese kick for the Lunar New Year festival by releasing ornamental carp into rivers and lakes, an age-old ceremony hold the Tet holiday officially begins. The tradition stems from the fable of three kitchen gods who ride on the back of a carp. Hanoi resident says in this event only a few people participate because some people are still afraid about coronavirus disease in the country. <laughs> This year, my family members also wanted to come, but they were afraid of the virus. I think it's the common mindset now, that people want to come out, but they don't feel safe at the same time. You can see the street is much less crowded, because people either are abiding by the rules or worried about the virus. A student says feel better, after releasing fish into the river, she wishes her luck in the new year. COVID, no, no. 
Releasing the fish makes me feel better about myself. It's like I have done a good deed, so I'll be luckier in the new year. The event, which takes places across Vietnam, is slightly more muted than previous years, following the detection of a new cluster of COVID-19 cases across several northern provinces. Thanks to aggressive and contact tracing and targeted mass testing, Vietnam has kept its tally to a low 1,948 cases and 35 deaths. Despite that, the recent confirmation that Vietnam's latest outbreak of the more contagious variant of the disease first detected in Britain led some to take extra precautions. And that's all for today. Stay safe, stay healthy by washing your hands, use your mask, and continue to maintain social distancing rule. See you.